Hi, I'm Zoe Bentley. Welcome to Exogeology Rocks. Here we are in sunny Pasadena, California, and we're at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL. Welcome. Hi, I'm Zoe Bentley, uh, your host of Exogeology Rocks. This is episode two, and I'm here to interview Joy Crisp, a planetary scientist here at JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. I'm, I'm Joy Crisp. I uh, have worked on various Mars rover missions over the years, starting with Sojourner in the late 90s, and then uh, working on uh, the Spirit and Opportunity mission, and now I'm working on the mission where we're building a rover to launch to Mars in 2011 called Curiosity. That's really exciting. So, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do. What's your job on these rover projects? Okay, well, on this mission I am a uh, deputy project scientist. So that is a job looking out for the science team and making sure that they will have what they need to carry out the mission. So, um, I actually share this duty with another deputy project scientist and we split the work. So. Uh, I focus on the instruments uh, that will receive the drilled sample or scoop sample and analyze them, and uh, also the, the whole uh, mechanism that will do the drilling and scooping, and working with the engineers on uh, testing those with good rock samples to make sure it'll work right on Mars. And then another aspect that I work on is uh, planning for the team training and okay. coming up with exercises that will uh, get the science team used to working together and uh, learning the procedures and things that they'll have to follow when we land on Mars. What sort of exercises would these be? Uh, we've done a few. One we did where we sent a person out into the field and he took pictures and we collected rock samples ahead of time and then the science team looked at those pictures and pretended they were doing the mission and then they would argue amongst themselves about what the rover should do the next day and this was done in slow motion so over a period of like a week they would plan out what the activities of the rover should be and they had to live within uh, certain restrictions like they will on the mission they can't just do you know infinite amount of things because the rover has so much power and there's so much time in a day so they planned those things out and then the person went back out in the field and would collect that data for the team to look at so they were practicing interpreting the data and deciding what to do with the rover. Okay. And we did another one where we took Spirit and Opportunity data, showed it to them and said, pretend you have an MSL rover and you're here and you see these images. Now decide what to do and use the planning tools to, to plan the activities of the rover. Okay. That sounds neat. Sounds like it'd be really useful to know what sort of thing you're up against before you do it. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get interested in planetary science and geology? Well, I got interested in geology in college by accident. <laughs> so I was uh, taking a lot of math and some science and trying to figure out what I wanted to do for a career. And uh, I just happened to take geology introductory, introductory class in my second year and really liked it and then kept with it and did not know I would end up doing something uh, in space science until uh, after getting a PhD, um, again looking for work and found that there was a job at JPL looking at uh, volcanic rocks on the Earth from uh, NASA missions that were flying around the Earth. And uh, it just happened again by accident that I started interacting with other scientists here that were looking at Mars pictures and looking at volcanic rocks on Mars. And that's how I got pulled into the Mars mission. What are you currently working on? Well, cur currently working on um, a planning for a test that will occur in about a year for the science team. So we've picked a, a location on the Earth that has interesting geology and we're just doing all the planning to make a higher fidelity, so more like the real mission uh, case. Rather than have a person just hand hold a camera and take pictures, mm -hmm. we're setting up a stand with a motorized platform that we can command to point and shoot in the manner in which the team wants it to point and shoot and t to emulate all the cameras on the rover. There's a whole bunch with different fields of view and different capabilities so we're buying off the shelf 
cameras and lenses to simulate kind of what they will see so they get better practice when the pictures come back and the, and the, the other kinds of chemical data and mineralogical data come back, they'll have practiced looking at it and thinking about it and then planning what the rover should do. So that'll be a one-week test and uh, it's just a really big job so we're starting now with that planning and, and purchasing the equipment to, to use. Okay. Where are you going to uh, land? Yes. What are you the, going the, to do? In the experiment, you mean? The test or in or the real Mars the mission? The real thing. The real thing. Oh, okay, so. No, both. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right, so for the real mission, um, that will launch in uh, uh, around November of 2011 and land in August of 2012. We have four possible landing sites picked out, and we're still scoping out uh, the best site for safety concerns, for landing, and also for science. What, what are the best sites? So we've got scientists pouring over them and engineers looking at them, and we'll pick the, the final site around next spring, kind of in, in that time frame. Um, and then for our test, um, uh, I can't divulge the location of, of the, the test because uh, our team members would run off and try to research it and figure out the answer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we want to keep them blind to it so they pretend, you know, this would be like a Mars mission. They don't know uh, much about it except what we give them. So um, we have to keep it a secret for now. Okay. What's a typical day like? Uh, <laughs> uh, days can vary quite a bit. Uh, some days will be full of meetings, so on a big project like this with hundreds of people at, at the Jet Propulsion Lab working on it, you have to keep uh, meeting with the different teams to find out what they're doing because there are little changes that occur along the way in the, in the hardware and the software and the planning for how you're going to do things. So you keep going to meetings to find out what these changes are to make sure that they're going to work okay and then you speak up if it's not and, and you learn what the other project schedule is so that the science team is following that schedule and then you'll be ready for tests and things like that to come along. Uh, other days can be free of meetings and that means you know you can you can read scientific literature publications that other scientists have written you can uh, work on these tests and things that you have so it's, it's kind of um, up to you to decide how important the meetings are and, and then to find other time to get work done. What are some examples of projects that you've worked on before? Oh, I've worked on quite a variety of projects. Um, I'll, I'll just give you a few so you get an idea of how different they can be. So I found myself uh, in a helicopter over the Mauna Loa lava flow in Hawaii uh, with it dropping down and letting us out uh, to pick up samples and then getting back in, and this is on a very rugged lava flow, <laughs> and then flying low to the ground and being dropped off at another location and picking up some more to study the changes in that lava flow along the length of it, um, look, bring it back to the laboratory, slicing it up into thin sections and looking at them in a microscope to see how the crystals change along the length of the flow. And I was trying to relate that to what we see from aircraft looking at it in the thermal infrared. Um, so that's one example. Another example is um, I really like working with computers and so I've spent a lot of time looking at uh, volcanic eruption clouds from remote sensing to, to map out where the ash and the different gases are in the plume as they uh, move away from the, the eruption column. So that was a, an interesting kind of work. Um, and then working on these Mars projects I've uh, it had to do things like go to where they're um, testing the airbags and, and come up with some rocks. They turned out to be fake rocks that we made out of fiberglass that were bolted to a board in a big 100-foot thermal vacuum chamber. And then the airbags for uh, Pathfinder were fired at these rocks to test the airbags to see if they were going to work when they hit the ground and they hit rocks. Would they rip open or not? And so they needed geologists to help figure out what to put in that test. So it, it's a wide array of things that you find yourself doing. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. What's the best part of your job and the worst part? Oh. The best part is the, the excitement that you have when the mission is happening and you're, you're encountering new things and, and it's just, you can see beautiful things in the pictures that come back and then uh, new findings that just excite you because you didn't expect them. Um, 
So that would be a highlight and 